This is a mini guiding scope, one of the many you can find on the market. It's lightweight, it's compact, affordable, and it works pretty well. So I have no complaint whatsoever about this mini guiding scope, but it's not exciting either. I mean, you can, what you can do is you take your camera, you pop it in, and there you go, you start guiding right away. Perfect, but can we do something more? Can we have a guiding scope that can be a bit more flexible in the way, in the uses that it allows? The answer is yes. A much more exciting scope, guiding scope, is this one. This is the Skywatcher Evo Guide. It's the latest guiding scope from Skywatcher. It's already a beauty to look at. You have this nice black, green and white color scheme, typical of the latest Skywatcher gear. And uh, it's bigger, bigger than the mini guide scope. It's about 30 cm in length, it's 900 grams in weight, including the guiding scope ring. So these rings are included with the, uh, with the scope. They are mounted on a foot featuring a mini Vixen style plate so that you can slide it into your, um, into your imaging telescope and you are ready to, good to, to, to guide right away. Um, the construction is all metal, including the front cap, which by the way has a bit of a loose fit, so be careful not to, to lose the cap. The only piece of plastic in this setup is the rear dust cap that goes here. Otherwise, uh, the building quality of the instrument is very high, I'm very pleased, and the cost is less than 200 euro. Now, there is another nice feature, and that is about the focusing. Uh, mini guide scope like this one, to focus you need to screw or unscrew the front element from on the body and then goes to lock with this gear here, with this ring here. Now, when you do adjust the focus, you have also play of this front element and so make the, 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 the focusing adjusting uh, adjustment is a bit of a hit and miss. I'm not really a fan of that. If I have one complaint is the way this guy focus. But on the EVO guide, you have an helical focuser. The ring is very smooth to operate, is large enough that you can operate it easily with the winter gloves. It's nice to grab and uh, it's very precise. The adjustment of the focus is very, very precise. Only thing is a minor lag when you reverse the focusing direction. So if you overshoot the focus in one direction and you want to, uh, to reverse the focusing, then you have to turn the ring a bit more than what you, you would expect in order to start focusing in the opposite direction. Other than that, no complaint whatsoever. And you take your imaging camera, your guiding camera, you slide, you can use it with the uh, 125 inches nose piece, nose piece, so that you can use um, a filter, like in this case is an infrared cut filter, and you slide it into the instrument, you lock it with a thumb screw, and there you have it. This combination, my camera is the ASI 224MC, gives an optical resolution of 3.2 pixel. Uh, arc, mean, arc second per pixel, so it's not the highest optical resolution up there, but for guiding is good enough also for guiding longer uh, telescope. Uh, the reason is that I can use this as daylight um, telephoto lens, so I can connect here my um, DSLR or I can remove this spacer can just remove it and instead use my uh, adapter for my Micro Four Third camera. I can screw it in using the T2 thread or I can mount the nose piece and put a filter, 125 inch filter and slide it in into the back of the instrument. So I can use, for instance, this 
lensed for doing uh, some infrared daylight photography using an infrared pass filter that I can mount on the nose piece. Now, we can use it also as a spotting scope. If we take an eyepiece, we can pop it at the back of the instrument, then uh, we can use the, the Evo Guide as a spotting scope for daylight observation, let's say bird observation or things like that. The problem when you do that, when you want to use this telescope with an eyepiece, then you cannot use a diagonal because you will not achieve focus and also when you insert directly the eyepiece you have to mind that if you insert it completely then you will not be able to achieve focus to avoid the guessing um, in the box you find this little spacer this goes on the uh, eyepiece like so you snap it in position and now you have when you insert the eyepiece this is at the right position so that you can achieve focus in this configuration then you can use it as a spotting scope but also you can use it as a finder scope to frame uh, the interesting part of the sky with your uh, larger telescope you can also use it as a grab and go a telescope to observe the moon or jupiter or the brightest deep, deep sky target uh, this is because it's very bright um, and you can use it like a 10 millimeter eyepiece. You can even use a barrel lens on it. So the, bright, the, the view will remain bright enough. And uh, I tested on the moon and Jupiter and I was quite pleased about it. Of course, it cannot compare with uh, a 20 inch Dobsonian telescope, but for such small, compact and lightweight uh, telescope, I, I was quite impressed. So here you have it. We have a mini guide scope that you can use it to guide or for little more money you can get something like the Evo guide that allows you to use uh, the scope for more than just guiding. You can use it as a telephoto lens for your camera, you can use it as a daylight spotting scope, as a finder scope and as a little gra grab and go telescope. Now, if this is not exciting enough, I left out the full name of the, of the telescope here. This is the EvoGuide 50ED. So if you are into uh, photography or astrophotography, you know that with ED, we usually indicate that inside the instrument there are special glass, high quality glass, that is used to reduce chromatic aberration. So in effect, this Evo guide is an apochromatic doublet, has two ED lenses from Hoara, one of which is a F, uh, FPL 53. So things start to get interesting. There are many imaging telescope refractors that are apochromatic and they are doublet and they are commonly used for astrophotography. And uh, a 242 mm in focal length, 50 mm aperture and f4.8 this thing is dangerously close to the specification of another telescope out there that is highly regarded uh, produce extremely high quality images but is also much more expensive and this is the William Optic Optics Redcut Z51 so when Skywatcher released this uh, guiding scope, people start to think, hmm, maybe this could be used as an alternative, a budget alternative to something like the Red Cut for wide field as deep sky astrophotography. Um, is this the case? In principle, Skywatcher is still marketing this as guiding scope. And this is because you have a strong field curvature. The only usable part of the frame is the very center uh, otherwise you have these elongated stars with the runaway effect so that's not a, something you would like to have in your astrophotography and uh, this is a common feature on many refractors but all the other refractors they have a dedicated field flattener that you pop on the back of the instrument and the, flatten, the, the field of view is corrected and now you have pinpoint stars um, 
on the frame, uh, all over the frame. So, why did Skywatcher market an apochromatic doublet for guiding? The idea was that the fact to use ED glass was remove chromatic aberration, would make tighter stars and so improve the performances. But now they are selling this one with also a green stylish vixen style plate bar. So this guiding ring will not be mounted on the foot. You can remove the foot and mount them on this vixen plate. So that means that Skywatcher is giving you the possibility to easily connect this guiding scope to your uh, tripod, to your Star Adventurer. And uh, so this is kind of a mixed signal because you are marketing something as a, as a, as a guiding scope but you are giving me a configuration that I can, can be also be used for imaging. Okay, so you may think, or when I, the first things I tried was to image the moon and the planet. So it works very well, and you may think that this, so this addition of this new bar that is now provided is intended to allow you to use this guiding scope to, for planetary photography even though the focal length is rather rather small but for the moon with a te with a, an astro with a planetary camera like the ASI 224MC then you get quite a nice view of the moon and maybe even Jupiter so we could leave it like that but very recently Skywatcher came out with this this is the EvoGuide 50ED Field Flattener. This is a dedicated field flattener for this instrument. It will replace the spacer here and will flatten the field of view of the instrument, turning effectively this into an imaging scope for wide field astrophotography with very little chromatic aberration, pinpoint sharp start that you can get easily with this precise helical focuser and with the field flat thanks to the field flattener. Now is this a real low budget alternative to the red cut? I will discuss that in the next video. Thanks for watching.